Hello, and welcome to a short tutorial from Western Principles, which will show you some additional capabilities in Microsoft Project for the Web. Let's call them some extra tricks. This will help you learn how to better use Microsoft Project for the Web so that you can do better project management and ultimately be more successful with project deliveries and outcomes. This is part five of this free Microsoft Project for the Web course. Please see the description for this video for other related free how-to training for Project for the Web. In this training, we're going to cover several how-to steps for easily opening favorite schedules, finding schedules, saving task notes and documents, adding lag times, and deleting a schedule. To get the most benefit from this course, get ready to open Microsoft Project for the Web and follow along. Pause this video frequently to give yourself time to play with the features in Project for the Web. Favorites are a good way to mark and then quickly find and open schedules. Your favorites might include projects that you're currently working on, roadmaps that provide visibility to programs, or templates that you're frequently using to create new projects. When you add projects to your favorites, Microsoft Project creates a row of these on your Microsoft Project homepage. You can add projects as favorites by hovering over the project name in the project list. This will bring up the Mark Favorite star, as well as more options ellipsis. Simply click on the Mark Favorite, and the project will jump up onto your favorites menu. You can remove them from your favorites by hovering over the favorite project and more options ellipsis menu. Click on the menu and then select Remove from Favorites. The project will vanish from the Favorites bar. Let's try that in Microsoft Project for the Web. So here we are inside Project for the Web inside the Project Home page. And what we want to do is add a project as a favorite. We're going to pick this project here and you can see when I hover over it, I get the Favorite star popping up as well as the More Options menu. With this star marked Favorite, all I need to do is click on the star and now that project has been put up here inside my favorites bar. To open this project, now all I need to do is click on the project. And there it is. To remove this project from my favorites, I simply click on the more options here and pick remove from favorites. And it comes right off my favorites bar. You can pause the video here and try that in project for the web. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. If you're working with a lot of projects, it can be easy to lose one. From the project home, there are several ways to find projects. You can look at the list of your recently opened projects, or the list of projects that have been shared with you, or the list of projects that you've created. If none of these work for you, you might need to expand the list using Show More at the bottom of the list, or try typing the name of the project in the filter list. Let's try that in Microsoft Project for the Web. To find a project in Project for the Web is pretty easy to do. You may end up with a big list of projects, but let's look at this. First thing I can do, of course, is pick from my favorites projects. I might also come down here to my recents, and these are projects that I've opened recently. If I don't see the project there, and I know I did open it recently, I might pick Show More. The project also might be shared with me, or created by me. If I still can't find it, I might come over here to the filter list and type in some keywords from the project name. There's the project I want. You can pause the video here and try that in Project for the Web. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. Each task can have notes with it. These notes can be used in many ways, such as adding additional description to the task or describing the progress on a task. To add a note, bring up the information panel using the eye on the task. Under the task name, you'll see some green text that says add a note. Click on this and type away. Need to edit or add to the note? Click on it and edit it. When a task has a note on it, you'll see a note showing in the quick look column. Let's try that in Microsoft Project for the Web. Here we are inside our project in Project for the Web. What we want to do is add a task note. So we hover over the project task name, we pick the I for the additional details, and right here where it's green, we can click on this and we can start to add a note. When we're finished adding the note, all we have to do is click off the note anywhere we want. You can see over in the quick look column, we now have a note showing here. If I click on this, I'll be able to view the note. There it is. You can pause the video here and try that in Project for the Web. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. 
Each task can also have attachments or documents attached to it. Like notes, these documents can be used for adding additional information to the task and describing the progress on a task. You can also use attachments to collect the task's deliverables. To add a document, bring up the information panel and scroll down on it to find the Add Attachment button. From here you'll see that you can add documents from your PC or from SharePoint, and you can also add website or intranet URLs. When you've added the document, it shows up on the information panel. It also shows up as a paperclip in the Quick Look column. Here we are back inside Project for the Web, and now what we want to do is add a document or an attachment to our task. Once again, we bring up the details for this task. We scroll down a little bit here and we can see Add Attachment. If we click on Add Attachment, it's going to bring us up to this little menu. So I can add documents to this task from my computer, from the team files, or from a link to a URL. Let's start with a link to a URL. So I've added the link to the Western Principles website here. You can see up here in the Quick Look column that I've got one attachment. If I click on this link, it will open up the Western Principles website. Let's add a document in here as well. We're going to add this from my computer. So off to the side we picked a PDF document and we've added that in. Now that we've added it, we can close the information details and we can see over here in our Quick Look column that we now have two attachments. If I click on the Attachments view here, we can see the attachments. And I can further click on this PDF document and it'll open it up for me. You can pause the video here and try that in Project for the Web. Click Play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. Lag time is best described as wait time that is expected to happen before a task can begin. Lag time is normally accounted for in the duration of a finish to start relationship. For example, if you painted a wall and the paint was going to take 8 hours to dry before you put the second coat on, you might put this in the relationship between tasks as a lag time of 8 hours. This pushes the next painting task out. Lag time can be negative, which means that if you have two related tasks, task 1 starts, and before it finishes, task 2 will start. Negative lag time is an unusual circumstance, and we won't look at that in this tutorial. Positive lag is the opposite. It means that the second task starts later than the finish to start relationship would normally dictate. Lag time, especially negative lag time, can cause problems in your schedule, as lag time can cause confusion in your dates and assignments. Microsoft Project for the Web doesn't have a way to indicate lag time. The workaround is to put a task in between two related tasks and to use that specifically to indicate lag time. You should name the task to indicate that it is lag time and also describe why you have it. For example, maybe the task here should really be called lag time vacate room 2. If you assign the task to the project manager, then you have someone who's responsible for watching over the lag time and making sure it doesn't go over. This is how you can create positive lag time. Let's try that in Microsoft Project for the Web. Here we are back inside Project for the Web and we're looking at the timeline view of our Paint Office project. We've got our painting tasks here, Paint Coat number 1 and Paint Coat number 2, and they're happening one after the other. But we know that's not really how the painting happens. We know that there's time in between these two activities for the paint to dry. Let's go over to our grid view and we're going to add some lag time between these. So we're going to insert a task above lag time paint dries. We're going to say this is going to take a day. We're also going to assign this job to our project manager. And the reason we're assigning it here is so that Sarah keeps track of this paint drying time and make sure that we don't, for example, wait three days or four days. So that's her responsibility. But there's not really a deliverable in this activity. Let's go back over to our timeline view and we'll hook it in. Here's our paint drying time. We're just going to grab a link from paint coat number one and pull that in. And then we're going to grab a link from the lag time to our paint coat number two. And now what we've done is we've put a day of lag time in between these two activities. You can pause the video here and try that in Project for the Web. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. 
When you delete a schedule in Microsoft Project for the web, it really is a deletion. There is no recycling. When someone deletes a project, that project is straight up trashed and it's gone. Because of the collaborative nature of Microsoft Project for the web, anyone on the project team could delete the project. So this is something you need to be aware of and a reason to occasionally export your schedule to an Excel file so that you have a record of it. Fortunately, the delete function is kind of hidden, so it isn't really obvious how you delete a schedule. But let's see where it is. Start by opening the project you want to delete. In the top right corner, click on the More Options menu. From that, open up the project details. Open the next More Options menu from the top right. And here's where you can delete the project. When you pick Delete Project, you'll get a warning and you can go ahead and finish your delete at that point but only if you're really, really, really sure that you want to delete it, because it is permanent. Let's try that in Microsoft Project for the web. All right, let's see what it looks like to delete a schedule. We're gonna take this Paint 3 Rooms version two schedule. Here it is. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up under the More Options menu on the right. And you can see here we could export it to Excel, copy it, or look at the project details. We wanna look at the project details. Here's the information panel for the project details, and again we have a More Options menu at the top. If we select that, the only option here is Delete Project. Let's delete the project. We get a warning. This will permanently delete the project, and it really will, permanently. So we pick Delete at this point, and now it's gone. Let's go back and we'll look for that project. It's gone. That's great. You can pause the video here and try that in Project for the Web. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. Thanks for watching this video and congratulations, you finished the Extra Tricks tutorial. Please join us for other detailed tutorials about using Microsoft Project for the Web to drive successful project outcomes.